I am Boom. I'm the creator of The Jellyfish, and you're listening to True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. On this episode, I chat with Boom about her new graphic novel, The Jellyfish, from Pow Pow Press. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Podcasts, and YouTube Video. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Hailing from Montreal, Boom holds a bachelor's degree in animation, and she's seen her short films travel around the world. Since 2011, Boom has dedicated her time to creating comics. Her many works include A Small Revolution and her long-running award-winning series Boomeries. She has a husband, two daughters, two cats, and a long to-do list. Her most recent work is a graphic novel, The Jellyfish. The Jellyfish is the story of Odette, a 20-something-year-old with their own place, a steady job at a local bookstore, an adorable pet rabbit, and a budding crush on one of their customers. But Odette is haunted by something only they can see, a jellyfish that's floating in their eye, blocking their vision. It's a seemingly minor annoyance until the jellyfish starts multiplying. The jellyfish is described as a tour de force of graphic storytelling, a powerful, occasionally terrifying story of facing the thing that we fear the most and finding a light to guide us through the darkness. So, without further ado, here's my chat with Boom about her new graphic novel, The Jellyfish, from Pow Pow Press. So, Boom, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. Before we get going with all the questions, I would like to know, what are you reading today? What's on your bedside reading table? I just finished reading, I believe in English, it's called The Great Beyond by... I want to say Léa Muraniec. Uh, I believe she's French. Uh, It exists in English. I'm not sure who the publisher is in English, but it's a really, really striking comic uh, with really, really bold colors and a weird, intriguing storyline where people have to, like, if you don't want to die, people have to be thinking about your name all Mm. the time. So people have to carry like pieces of cardboard with their names. So people read them on the street. And so that's how they, they're kept alive. And the main character's um, problem is that there is this new singer uh, who's really, really popular, who has the very same name that ah. she has. So whenever someone reads that name, they think of the singer and not her. And so mm. she's on the verge of dying. And then that's what she does to wow. fix the problem it's unlike anything i've ever read before it looks amazing and i i recommend it <laughs> okay yeah very intriguing that's for sure that's for sure well we're talking because you have a new book out called the jellyfish from pow pow press uh, for those who aren't familiar with it i wonder if you could talk a little bit about the story sure uh, it's the story of uh, odette who is uh, in the, their early 20s uh, they're a bookstore clerk. They're a university dropout. Uh, they're, you know, at the very beginning of adulthood where you're looking for, you know, your independence, trying to distance yourself from your parents and that kind of thing. But at the very beginning of the book, Odette uh, is diagnosed with a jellyfish in their eye. So there's a jellyfish swimming around uh, in their vision. The reader can see the jellyfish as well, but nobody else in the book except Odette can see it. So I don't want to, you know, say too much because it's very hard not to spoil the book. It's a story about about disease. It's a story about the grief of a previous life and the importance of a chosen family and friends and uh, friendship and love and that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so, that's that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Typically the the books that you've done in the past have been about your family and your kids and all that sort of good stuff that goes along with it. I was wondering what inspired you to create this particular story? It's a little bit different from what you've done before. Yeah, it's not my first venture into fiction because I wrote um, A Small Revolution uh, in 2012, which was uh, then released in English in 2017, if I am not mistaken, from Soaring Penguin Press. So that was fiction, like complete fiction. This, uh, in French, we have autofiction, which is kind of a mix of some autobio and then mixed with 
like uh, things that aren't real that didn't happen in my own life. So the jellyfish is kind of that. Uh, so basically, I had eye diseases for a long time, and um, I kind of didn't really know what the problem was because no one was able to like diagnose anything in particular, and they kept being like, oh, you've had some kind of inflammation. You probably have scarring in your eye. And I could see um, some kind of blob in my vision, in my right eye, uh, which moved like a jellyfish. So I had this weird blob that floated around in my vision. And I would say I have a jellyfish in my eye because I had no other name for it. Nobody knew what disease it was, so I didn't have a name for it. So I, I was like, it's a jellyfish. And then the story practically wrote itself. Uh, mm. I was like, how easy would it be to write a story about a character who has a literal jellyfish in their eye? It almost was an animated short because I used to be uh, an animator. I used to work in animation and I pitched it to the National Film Board for uh, some sort of call for submissions uh, they had back then. And I was one of three finalists for a project called The Jellyfish, which was a five minute film. And it was the same premise, but in the, you know, a very light version, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> very short version. So I wasn't selected, which is good because the book I made out of that idea is much better than the film would have been. I also have, you know, I had 12 more years of experience of storytelling under my belt. <laughs> so it's it's much better. So it's a, it's a good thing. Do you ever think you might revisit that animated type of style in the in the future? I'm not sure. I haven't animated in 12 years. And I figured out that what I enjoyed the most was telling stories through drawing and comics checks all the boxes for that. And it's also probably, they're not easier to do, but they're more doable as a one person team. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Then animation yeah. is because, you know, animation, I could animate the whole thing. But then what about the sound? Mm -hmm. What about the music? Uh, that's the kind of thing I can't really do by myself. So I feel like comics uh, is more approachable. And then and now I've had, uh, you know, I have a comics cartoonist career now. <laughs> right. So right. I feel pretty comfortable uh, doing what sure. I do. And I really enjoy uh, making comics. Maybe one day. I'll hmm. go back. Okay. What I liked the most in animation was actually storyboarding, which will ah. surprise no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's kind of kind of the same. Sure. Now, uh, what do you hope readers will take away after reading The Jellyfish? Is there something you hope that they draw from your story that uh, will do something to them? You know, there's uh, multiple um, subject matters in The Jellyfish, but one of them is how people can be battling invisible chronic diseases or, you know, whatever. And you, you just don't know. People would, like even my husband would forget that I had this thing in my eye and then randomly one day he'd be like, do you still have your jellyfish? I'd be like, yeah, of course. You don't get to think about it every single day of your life because it's not in your vision. You don't get to think about like that thing in your eye. So he would forget about it. And so it hit me that um, like I want to make the readers understand what it's like to have some sort of condition that you can't not think about. And um, I also wanted to stress the um, importance of surrounding yourself with people who support you and love you and that kind of thing. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I understand your book was originally published in French and now it's, a, it's available in English, which is great. So more people yeah. can enjoy it. I was wondering, did you have any challenges in the translation process? There were some challenges. It's the first time I don't translate my work myself. You know, I speak English, but I am not an Anglophone. So my English is not the best that there could be. Uh, I tend to be very literal, especially especially when I take like an, a French sentence and then I try to put it into English. I'm not always the most creative translator. It was very interesting. I worked with Helga Dasha and Robin Lang. And what was the most interesting thing is that they really tried to keep uh, Montreal true to herself, I guess you could put a city, like a feminine city. So for example, the bookstore in French, it's called Point Virgule, which is semicolon. Oh. in French, mm -hmm. but they thought that this didn't sound really good. 
uh, like the first thing, it didn't sound good, but also it was not like you're, you're in Montreal, probably all, most of the stores are going to, are going to have French names or, you know, something, maybe some English and then French underneath. And so they suggested apostrophe because it's a bilingual word. It's the same word in French oh. and English. Huh. So the English speaking uh, readers will, you know, understand what it's about, but then it's true to the French Mm -hmm. nature of Montreal and also it's not it makes sense that it would be called apostrophe so that was uh, <laughs> an in interesting take uh, we changed some of the names uh, Le, Leo in French is called Leon uh, and his girlfriend in French is Martine which Robin thought was perhaps too close to Martin for some ah. people who had never heard the name Martin. Mm -hmm. So we switched it to Rochelle, but then with a French spelling, just so it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's happening in Quebec, you know, that kind right. of thing. It was very interesting to work with them. Uh, we had some, um, like a, a bit of a struggle with Odette's pronouns in French. Odette is uh, she, her, because we don't have the they, them. Odette is very androgynous from the get-go. That was my goal. But in French, because we don't have, uh, well, we didn't have a neutral pronoun when I started working on the story, I just decided, okay, so so Odette's just going to be she, her for the French version. But if I ever have an English translation, I'm going to, I think it would be best if Odette was a they, them, just so, you know, uh, it, it feels more true to the character. But interestingly, Odette is present in almost all of the scenes. So there are never any pronouns until like page something like page 142 where mm. she, um they Odette is outside a store and then two of their friends are inside speaking about them and that's the only point where somebody's speaking about Odette and might use pronouns so we just decided not to use any so mm. there are no pronouns in the book and then the reader can just fill in the blanks with whatever they want and i thought that was pretty cool which is not the case in french there you so go. That's, well, that, was, that was the main struggle. That's what right. we worked right. around. We had to rewrite some scenes to get the pronouns out. But there are pronouns in the blurbs and the and you know the, the flaps and that kind of thing and the you know the book description on Bards and Noble and that <laughs> kind of things. They can can't be avoided. <laughs> right, right. I, I remember talking to uh, a creator in the past, and there was some issue about the jokes. Sometimes are a little too focused, uh, perhaps too uh, regional. Was there yeah. any issue there in the translation from regional joke, perhaps, to something a little bit broader? Um, there is one uh, instance where Odette is talking about how they had a pet that was named uh, Rasputin when they were young. And then now they have a rabbit called Napoleon, just to keep with the historical figure theme. And then uh, Nina replies, oh, who's the next one going to be Justin Trudeau? So the translators were like, I'm not sure everyone will get it. And I was like, well, I think they will. I think Justin Trudeau is pretty well known, you know, for multiple things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At first, because he was supposedly good looking, and then because he did some, you know, <laughs> other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But the translators were insisting they wanted to have some sort of, like, I don't know, Genghis Khan, that kind of oh. thing. Like, no, it defeats the purpose, because mm -hmm. the point was to name somebody who's probably won't mark history as much as like Napoleon, that kind right, of thing. Like exactly. Justin Trudeau is kind of, you know, he didn't do anything great. Well, I think he didn't do anything great. <laughs> uh, I don't know how history will remember him, but as we decided to let it be, so the joke is the same. I almost put Donald Trump, but it was, I don't know, they, not everyone agreed. So mm. I just, let's just keep the original joke. I there think it's go. fine. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the creative process. I'm curious to know what tools you use to create your book. It's a first for this one. There is no paper involved at all. This is my 16th book. And I've always had some sort of paper stage, uh, either for, you know, pencils or inking. But I didn't say, I don't think I said uh, this while we were recording. But uh, when I began working on the book, just right after I had signed with my publisher, I lost my eye. Um, so because I've had eye diseases, it eventually ended up in me losing my right eye. And so because I have one working eye, the perception of death um, is affected. 
And so drawing on paper is kind of weird now. It feels like I, I can never draw exactly where I want to. It's like, I think I'm going to draw that line there, but then it's like slightly to the right or something. So it's really annoying on top of being, um, it's, it's like I can't focus. Uh, I get headaches. Uh, I get dizzy. And so it's not super fun anymore. Uh, to sign a book, like drawing and doodling in a book uh, at a signing, th that's fine. Uh, I don't get to draw, you know, for long enough that it becomes a problem. But uh, to draw an actual comic page, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again on paper. So I, once all that I thing had settled down and I wasn't like spending every day, every single day in the hospital to try to save it, which didn't work. Um, I decided to go for the iPad. So uh -huh. I penciled, I penciled the whole thing in Procreate on the iPad. I inked it on the computer in Clip Studio Paint, which I really, really enjoy for inking. Uh, it's really quick. It's, I really like it. And then I would bring it back into Procreate for the shading, which is um, uh, with uh, these really, really nice watercolor brushes that I really, they look real. They, mm -hmm. they feel real. I can't do what, like real watercolors. I've never been able to do and I, I kind of feel like I can do them. So yeah, so it's a weird, uh, a weird mix between iPad, computer, iPad. And then I would bring it into Photoshop for the lettering. Ah, okay. uh, so yeah, that's a lot of steps. But um, and also my computer was very, very old. And oh. uh, I had to transfer my files using like Google Drive and was oh, really my. complicated. It's fixed now. I have a new computer and oh, everything good. is yeah, I have a better system <laughs> for the next book. <laughs> right, right. So besides this podcast uh, that we're doing right now, I'm wondering what other plans do you have to promote your book? What will you be doing? I have a bunch of interviews coming up, but um, I I have a pretty big spring, I would say. Next week, I'm headed to the Comics Festival in Quebec City, Quebec BD, uh, but that's for the French version of the Jellyfish. But then the week after, I'm in Moncton, New Brunswick, uh, for the Fry Festival. And I thought I was going to, because it's it's bilingual, so I, I was going for the French version. But I've learned today that they're, they might have the English version ahead of its launch. So I, I, I haven't even seen it, the book, in English. So I'm going to be pretty happy if they do have it. But then coming up. Right after, like a few weeks after, it's uh, TCAF in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be at TCAF. The week after, it's VanCAF in Vancouver. And I'm, I'm going to be going with Pow Pow Press. Nice. And then a week after that is the MCAF, so the Montreal oh. Comic Arts Festival. So I'm back home, but it's still... MCAF is the busiest um, event for me. Uh, it's always my craziest, <laughs> busiest uh, event of all. I, I really like MCAF, but having it like third of three calves mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll be calved out but it's it's gonna be fun i'm oh yeah i have nothing planned in june thankfully. there you go <laughs> chance to relax but mcaf is always fun i i always i always like going there and i'm looking forward to attending this year as well so uh lots of good stuff on the go for sure yeah hopefully we get good weather yes of course of course now <laughs> this book the jellyfish is technically in the past uh, it's done. Yes. So I'm wondering, what other projects do you have on the go that you can talk about? I am currently working on a new uh, graphic novel that's probably going to be longer, slightly longer than The Jellyfish. I didn't plan it that way, but, you know, when you write something and you're like, oh, well, I'm 150 pages in and it's still, <laughs> you know, I'm not done with it. It's going to be very different. We didn't talk about it, but the French version of the book has been the most successful thing I've ever worked on in my entire life. Uh, so it uh, was a commercial commercial success, and uh, I won something like, I don't know, seven prizes, six prizes. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, they're all listed it, here on the Pow Pow site. It's tremendous. So congratulations uh, on all those thank awards. Thank you. Uh, it, yeah. it's, it's nuts. I, I don't know what <laughs> happened. And a bunch of people who didn't know I existed, they would you know walk up to me and be like, this is your first book? I've never heard uh. of you before. I'm like, no, I've been here a while. This is my You're 16th. You're an overnight um, success, as they say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it changed everything. And uh, so I spent a great deal of 2023 traveling. Uh, I went to France twice to promote the book. 
uh, which is insane to me, twice in six months, twice within six months. And so like, I feel a really, really huge uh, amount of pressure <laughs> for the next one. Like it's a privilege and I'm really, really glad the book got as much success as it did. But I am uh, anxious about what's next. I'm like, the next one's going to be crap. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but you, you know, it's just I had, I, I, you know, a few months where I genuinely believe that no idea I ever had was good enough to like go after directly after the jellyfish. And after a while, I kind of went like, you know what, I'm just going to have fun. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. whatever happens, happens. And so it's, for now, it's called In Transit, and it's uh, set in the 90s because I want to get rid of smartphones. I don't want to draw mm-hmm. smartphones. Mm-hmm. So it's set in the 90s, and it's the story of a health program that allows you to exchange bodies with somebody else. Like you can mm-hmm. change your life by taking some taking over somebody else's life. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say more no, than that. No, I, I, that sounds very I interesting. Finished <laughs> it's it's kind of like low sci-fi, magic realism, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Kind of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. E sure. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, uh, and I finished the first draft of the script, and I am revising it over the next few days. And hopefully, maybe even Friday, I could get started on the storyboard phase, which I'm really excited about because I haven't drawn. I mean, I have drawn other things, but I haven't drawn my own like comic for a while because uh la meduse the jellyfish uh the french version came out in november 2022 and i finished it in september 2022 so it's you know a year and a half where i haven't really really worked on something i enjoyed so i'm excited to get going sure. again absolutely sounds good sounds good now i've got to ask you as a professional in the comic book field and and, and graphic novel uh i'm sure that a lot of people when you meet them at these various conventions come up to you and ask for advice so i'm wondering what one piece of advice would you give to someone who's making their own book what would you say to that person if they're like just starting i would probably say start small because i you know when you're young and have ideas i mean i was like that you kind of want to do that you know, 400 page epic, you know, thing that's like spanning five books or something. And I don't think it's a good idea to start with that because you have to, you know, figure out how long a book takes to make. (laughs) So it's pretty long. So starting small is a good idea. But I think uh, another uh, piece of advice I like to give to people is finish not perfect because you can get started on something and then it's such a long time between the first page and the last page that of course, you're going to improve your drawing abilities over the course of the project. And the last page is going to look much better than the first page. And you can fix it to some extent, but some people will want to start over. But then if you start over and then you get to the end again, it's going to be a never-ending cycle. So oh. you have to let go at some point and do better next time. So you finish the book, you look at it, you learn from it. And then what you've learned, you apply to the next one. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's what I would go for. That's good advice. Good advice for sure. So where can people find out more about your current and your future projects online? Do you have a website where people can go? I have a website, but it's more like the formal portfolio thing that I don't update, uh, you know, unless I have a new book or a new drawing or whatever. I'm active on social media. I have a Facebook page. I have an Instagram page. So it's, uh, I'm Boom, B-O-U-M on Facebook. I'm Boomeri, so B-O-U-M-E-R-I-E on Instagram because Boom was taken, of course. And so these, I've been posting, reposting uh, Boomeri strips because, um, I, because I work in the shadows now and I have nothing to show most of the time. So I've been feeding the algorithm with reruns of my old webcomic. Uh, and so, no, I did not just have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> She's eight now. Uh, so people have been congratulating me. I'm like, no, 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 this is a comic <laughs> from 2017. But I think the best place to learn about my upcoming projects is probably my Patreon. So I'm boom on there. So patreon.com slash B-O-U-M. I don't charge a lot of money. It's like one book and you get whatever you want. It's just like a tip jar. And I talk about whatever I have going on at the moment. I post a work in progress things. I I post, um, you know, 
of course I have like um, my the, the events I'm doing soon or for instance I have been posting about the jellyfish since the day I started it so they saw the whole pitch almost uh-huh. like maybe not like the details but the certainly the character designs the drawings the evolution of the character and then oh I signed with the publisher so here's you know, this one panel that was good today, or here's a couple pages because I thought they're great and I want to show them to somebody. Uh, and so they got to see the behind the scenes for years. And now the, like a good chunk of my patrons is uh, English speaking. So they're pretty excited that it's going to come out in a few weeks in English because they've been waiting for it for so long, for like <laughs> five years. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think Patreon would be the way to go. It's kind of like a really detailed blog where I just explain how I work. And like I would, I, I recently made a post about how I write scripts for comics. So I think it's it. I hope it's interesting. <laughs> Thanks to Boom for the chat. You can discover more about Boom on Instagram at Instagram.com slash B-O-U-M-E-R-I-E. And on Patreon at patreon.com slash B-O-U-M. You can discover the jellyfish on powpowpress.com. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. Remember to check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. You can follow along at True North Country Comics on most social media sites. And you can send any and all feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2024.